We are discussing about the drugs which are used for the treatment of peptic ulcer. In previous two video we had discussed about the introduction to the peptic ulcer as well as the H pharmacology of H2 and D histamines. Here we will discuss the pharmacology of proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole, esmeprazole, pandoprazole, lansoprazole, labiprazole and dexrabiprazole. So what is the mechanism of action of proton pump inhibitors? In one words, we can explain the mechanism as they will inhibit the proton pump that is the H plus K plus ATPase which are present in the parietal cell and which are used for the transport of H plus ion to the lumen, gastric lumen. So thereby it will prevent the transport of H plus ion into the lumen and thereby it will prevent the HCL formation. Usually the proton pump inhibitors are more effective than H2 blockers. Now different examples are omeprazole, pandoprazole, lansoprazole, esmoprazole, rabiprazole and dexrabiprazole. So whenever uh, the different mediators like histamines or acetylcholine will get activate the CEA uh, calcium plus dependent pathway it will activate the H plus K plus ATPase or proton pump in order to transport the H plus in the lumen, gastric lumen to combine with the chlorine to form HCl or acid. So by using these drugs, it will act on the proton pump H plus K plus ATPase pump thereby it will prevent the conversion or transport of H plus ion to the lumen thereby it will prevent the combination of H plus with Cl minus to form HCl. So that is the mechanism of action of proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, pandoprazole, lansoprazole, esmoprazole, rabiprazole and dexrabiprazole. Now this is the uh, site of action of proton pump inhibitors it will be blocked. Now coming to pharmacokinetics, usually the proton pump inhibitors are administered as endary coated tablets to protect them from the molecular transformation in the gastric acid juice. So what will happen if this uh, pro PPI proton pump inhibitors when come in contact with HCl? It will rearrange to two charged cationic form that react covalently with SH group of H plus K plus ATPase enzyme and thereby it will inactivate irreversibly. So in order to prevent this inactivation, we have to coat the drugs with endary coating tablets that will not dissolve in the gastric acid. So that is the important uh, point to be noted in case of pharmacokinetics of proton pump inhibitor. And one more thing, the acid secretion usually resume only when new H plus K plus ATPase molecule is synthesized. Usually this reactivation half-life is 18 hours. It also will inhibit the gastric mucosal carbonic anhydrides also. And one advice we should give to the patient who are taking the proton pump inhibitors are you, you should not broken or crush before swallowing this proton pump inhibitor tablet or capsules. Usually the bioavailability through oral route is 50 percentage due to its acid liability and usually this is taken in empty stomach uh, before one hour of food in order to activate the H plus K plus ATPase after, the, uh, after taking the food. Pharmacokinetics is important to the proton pump inhibitors in the acidic pH is a chemical reaction in covalent form that is inactivated. That is prevent the proton pump inhibitors in endary coated tablets. Endary coated tablets are put in a way Usually, uh, usually proton pump inhibitors in the dose before food done. Before food, minimum 30 minutes before food done. Then, we have to do the drug 
ഇൻഹിബിറ്റ് ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് എച്ച് പ്ലസ് കെ പ്ലസ് എ ടി പി എസിനെയാണ് ഈ എച്ച് പ്ലസ് കെ പ്ലസ് എ ടി പി എസ് സാധാരണ ഗതിയിൽ ഫുഡ് കഴിക്കുമ്പോൾ ആക്ടിവേറ്റഡ് ആവുന്നതാണ് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മളൊരു ഡ്രഗ് കഴിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞ് അത് ബോഡിയിൽ എത്തി അബ്സോർപ്ഷൻ നടന്നതിന് ശേഷം ഫുഡ് എത്തുമ്പോൾ മാത്രമാണ് ഈ എൻസൈമ ആക്ടിവേറ്റഡ് ആവുള്ളൂ അപ്പോൾ അപ്പോൾ മാത്രമേ ഈ പ്രോട്ടോൺ പമ്പ് ഇൻഹിബിറ്ററിൻ്റെ ആക്ഷൻ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുള്ളൂ ഇൻ കമ്പയർ വിത്ത് ദ അലോങ് വിത്ത് ദ ഫുഡ് ഓർ ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ ഫുഡ് so that is the pharmacokinetics of proton pump inhibitors now coming to the important adverse drug reactions of proton pump le- um, inhibitors like omeprazole as uh, nausea loose stool headache abdominal pain muscle and joint pain dizziness and rashes leukopenia hepatic dysfunctions are infrequent on prolonged treatment it may cause atrophic gastritis and usually a marked and long lasting suppression and compensatory hypergastremia are observed no harmful effect during the pregnancy though it is better to uh, advise to avoid the pp ppi use uh, ppi are usually often used for the uh, gerd condition during the pregnancy well, comparatively safe ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഡ്രഗ് ആണ് കുറച്ച് കോമൺ ആയിട്ട് കാണുന്ന സൈഡ് എഫക്ട്സുകൾ ഇതിലും തന്നെ ഉണ്ട് എല്ലാ ഡ്രഗിനും ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന പോലെ തന്നെ ഉള്ള ഡ്രഗ്സുകൾ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എഫക്റ്റുകൾ ഈ ഒരു ഡ്രഗിനും തന്നെ ഉണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളത് മനസ്സിലാക്കുക ഗ്യാസ്ട്രിക് അട്രോപ്പിക് ഗ്യാസ്ട്രൈറ്റിസ് കുറേ സമയത്തിന് പ്രോട്ടോൺ പമ്പിനെ ഇൻഹിബിറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പിന്നെ ഗ്യാസ്ട്രൈറ്റിസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവിടെ എച്ച് സി എൽ സെക്രീഷൻ ഇല്ലാത്ത രീതിയിലുള്ള ഒരു കണ്ടീഷനൊക്കെ വരാനുള്ള ചാൻസുകളൊക്കെ ഉണ്ട് now coming to the important drug interactions of omeprazole it will inhibit the oxidation of certain drugs like diazepam phenytoin and warfarin thereby it can increases the plasma concentration of diazepam phenytoin and warfarin along with the omeprazole it will interfere with the activation of clopidogrel which uh, by inhibiting one enzyme cyp2c1 this is an cytochrome p450 enzyme and reduced gastric acidity will decrease the absorption of ketoconazole and other salts that is a common side effect for all the drugs which are decreasing the gastric acid secretion because the ketoconazole will be better absorbed in the gastric ph or acidic ph so the drugs which will decreases the gastric acid will increases the gastric ph and thereby it will decreases the absorption of ketoconazole and clarithromycin will inhibit the omeprazole metabolism and it will increases the its metabo- uh, plasma concentration so these are the some uh, important drug interactions of omeprazole now coming to the uses of proton pump inhibitors like uh, omeprazole it is mainly used for the treatment of peptic ulcer usually omeprazole 20 mg od is equally or more effective than h2 blockers and it can be also used in case of bleeding peptic ulcer as it enhances the clot dissolution promoting ulcer bleeding so suppression of gastric acid acid has been found to facilitate clot formation and reduce blood loss and rebleeding also it can be used for the treatment of stress ulcer intravenous pantoprazole or rabiprazole are more effective prophylactically also it can be used in case of gerd gastroesophageal reflux diseases uh, this is used as an round the clock inhibition uh, inhibitor for the gastric acid resulting rapid li- relief from the symptoms and also it can be used in solinger ellison syndrome which is an carcinoma of parietal cell so there will be an increased secretion of gastric acid so by using ppi it is more effective than h2 blocker it can be also used in case of aspiration pneumonia now another proton pump inhibitor is pantoprazole another uh, commonly available ppi in the market it is pantoprazole in uh, with a different brand name like pando pandodac etc it have similar potency and clinical efficacy as that of omeprazole this is more acid stable and it have higher oral bioavailability it is also available as iv administration and this is particularly employed in bleeding peptic ulcer and also for the prophylaxis of acute stress ulcer affinity for cytochrome p450 enzyme is lower than the omeprazole or lansoprazole so 
the, uh, the risk for drug interaction is minimum. So that's why we are we will prefer pandoprazole than omeprazole. But this uh, molecule or this uh, drug will be costlier than the pandoprazole. So that is all about the proton pump inhibitors. In another video, we will discuss other drugs which are used for the treatment of peptic ulcer.